In this video I'll be building a leg base for some bedside tables that I made in a previous video which I'll link to in the description box. And there are some awkward angles which I need to figure out how to cut. I have a couple of offcuts of beach here which I'm going to use up and I'm going to start by ripping these down to width at the table saw. And as some of this material is still rough sawn, I ran them through the planer a few times to clean up the faces and get all of the pieces to exactly the same thickness. That's the milling done, now I need to figure out the angles. So if this is my apron rail and I cut the ends of the apron rail to 45 degrees, and let's say I cut my legs to 45 degrees as well, then that would give me a 90 degree angle here because two 45s add up to 90 degrees. But I want my legs to splay out something like this. I want the splay to be 15 degrees. So if I add that to 90, that gives me 105 degrees. And if I then divide that by two, I get 52.5 degrees. But cutting these two angles at 52.5 degrees on the mitre saw won't actually give me the result I need. And that's just because of how the scale on a mitre saw is laid out. Even though it's set to zero, it's actually cutting at 90 degrees. So if I take that 52.5 degrees and minus 45, that gives me 7.5 degrees. And that is kind of the golden number, really. I need to be 7.5 degrees off of 45 degrees. So if I take 45, and deduct 7.5, that gives me 37.5, and that is the angle that I need to cut at the mitre saw. So I'm gonna use this piece for an apron rail, and first I'm just gonna mark up the direction of the angle I want to cut. The actual angle isn't really important at this stage, I just want to know the direction so that I don't cut it in the wrong way. So now I can set the mitre saw to the 37.5 degree angle, which is round about there. And now I can cut that angle onto one end of each of my apron rails. On the top of my apron rail, the longest part to measure 400 millimeters. So I'm gonna make a mark. And then I can rotate the base of my mitre saw to 37.5 degrees in the opposite direction and lock it down. Now I'm gonna offer up my blade to that pencil mark that I just made. And at the other end of the workpiece, I'll set up a stop block just so that I can consistently cut each apron rail to exactly the same length. So those are the apron rails done. I'm going to use these pieces for my legs and where the leg meets the apron rail, again, I want to cut the same 37.5 degree angle. So again, I'll cut one end of each leg. I want the longest edge of my legs to be 240 millimeters, so I'll mark that up here. The leg is going to meet up with the apron rail like that, and I've got my pencil mark here, and I need this angle here to be parallel with the apron rail. Now I already know that the splay of my legs is 15 degrees, so this angle is either 15 degrees or 15 degrees off 90 degrees, which would be 75 degrees, just depending on how you look at the angle. But from the perspective of setting a mitre saw, this one will be set to 15 degrees. And again, I can line up the blade with my pencil mark. And unfortunately I can't use the stop block this time. So I'm just going to work to a line that I mark up on the mitre saw. And now my apron rails and legs meet together like that. I'm not done with the shaping yet though, as I want my legs to be tapered. So I mark up how I want that to look. And originally my plan to cut these tapers was just to create a simple jig using a scrap of plywood and some blocks glued and screwed to position each leg consistently. and I can then run that jig along the fence of my table saw to make the cuts. But to be honest, I wasn't completely comfortable making these cuts as it's a small workpiece and my hands were closer to the blade than I was comfortable with. 
Using hold down clamps or something would be a good idea, but I don't have any of those, so for the rest of the legs I just cut away the excess at the bandsaw and then worked up to my pencil line with a hand plane. I rely a lot on gut feel where safety is concerned, and if it doesn't feel right there's always other ways to get the same results. To assemble the legs I'm actually just going to use glue and screws, mainly because I wanted to get these built quickly and I didn't want to wait around for the glue to dry. But dowels or dominoes would be another good option here, or mortars and tenons, half laps or bridle joints if you want to get fancy with it. For me though, as these screws are never going to be visible on the finished piece, it seemed like a good option and it'll be nice and strong. I am going to be doing some joinery to secure the legs together though, and here I'm centering the legs and then using a knife to mark up where to remove material. Because I'm making a pair of nightstands, I can cut these half lap joints two pieces at a time. So for these two, I'm making the cut at the top of the open rails, and I want to cut to a depth of exactly halfway through the material, so I make the cuts using my tenon saw to just shy of those knife marks that I made. Remove the bulk of the waste with the chisel, and then I can use my chisel right on the knife mark line to get it nice and flat. And for the other two I cut at the bottom of the open rails. And as you can see they overlap and join together. And they went together a little bit tight to be honest, but I did manage to get them properly seated with a few wax from the mallet. And not really necessary, but I'm going to add a screw anyway. I'm going to drill a pilot hole through each leg that I can use to secure the leg base to the cabinet later on. And I want the screws to be a loose fit in the legs, so that the head of the screws can really cinch it down tight to the base. Recently I have a bad habit of doing things in the wrong order, and this is another example of that. I really should have sanded these legs before doing the joinery, but I guess I was just excited to put them together. I can check for level on a flat surface, and as you can see they're about 3mm off, and I'm just going to use the belt sander to make small adjustments to the end grain of the legs to get them sitting nicely. Another thing I really should have done prior to assembling is adding a small roundover to soften the edges. I made life really difficult for myself here. Rounding over the bottom of the legs will make sure that there's no chip out if they get dragged around the floor. For finish I'm using acrylic spray varnish and once dry I can denib with some 400 grit paper to get them nice and smooth before applying a second coat. Then I can get it centred onto the base, drill pilot holes and secure with some long screws. And I can get them put in place next to the bed which I made in a previous video, I'll link to that in the description box. I should also mention that I have plans and cut lists available for this bedside table project. If you'd like to get them, there's a link in the description box below, and if you're a channel member via Patreon or YouTube channel membership, you can get them from me free of charge. So I'm going to say that I think the bed is my personal favourite project out of the 400 or however many projects that I've done in the past. And these nightstands are pretty high up in the ranks for me too. I'm really pleased with how they look, and I think they accompany the bed really nicely. The carcass and drawers took me about 12 hours to complete, and the leg base took about four and a half hours, so in total these nightstands took me around 16 and a half hours to complete. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos if you'd like to help support the channel, plus get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. You'll find links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Thank you.